Today is Friday, August 28th. Welcome to this edition of Nevada County Now. Today's episode, we're talking Independence Trail, elections, books, and more. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Nevada County Now. I'm your host, Cole Pettit. The Jones Fire is mostly contained at this point. As of this morning, it sits at 92% containment. Now it's time to begin to assess the damage it has caused and begin the process of rebuilding. One place where this is necessary is the Independence Trail. For those who may not be aware of its history, the Independence Trail follows the route of the historic Excelsior Ditch. Started in 1855, the Excelsior Ditch was constructed by the Excelsior Canal Company, serving as a water transport ditch for mining and later irrigation, covering 35 miles and terminating at the South Yuba River. The Independence Trail was developed by John Olmsted and his nonprofit Sequoia Challenge as a nature trail for wheelchair access during the 1970s, including three miles of the Excelsior Ditch. Remnants of the ditch are still evident along the trail in the form of dirt-lined ditches, reconstructed wooden flumes and bridges, and rock walls. Most of the wooden flumes were rebuilt in the 1970s and 80s, and again after they burned during the 1988 49er fire. On Wednesday, we were able to attend a tour of the Independence Trail, led by the State Parks and CAL FIRE. In attendance were stakeholders from Nevada County and the Sheriff's Office, Bear Yuba Land Trust, South Yuba River Citizens League, and the Sierra Gold Parks Foundation. Let's take a look. Uh, today we're out here overlooking the Independence Trail uh, and in a few minutes we're going to go down and get a tour with CAL FIRE, the state parks, and some of the stakeholders including Bear Yuba Land Trust and kind of survey what the damage was. So here's a footing issue right over here, so you guys want to watch out. A little bit to the... Oh, okay. Yeah, that okay. was just okay. the okay. material we're here or what have you. Right. Yeah, there was a big push. Mm -hmm. Look, so we're going to be going through some different uh, land ownership. Probably about 90% of it is parks. We do have some land trust property in here too. Uh, mainly the fish ramp as we as we go farther along. And again, we're going to be working kind of on dual tracks here, both to the state side of FEMA recovery and, and on the county side too. CAL FIRE has been outstanding working with us in the rehab side of it. But, you know, Jones Bar is always, obviously you guys, if from everybody here, know it's been here forever, but it's never been, truly been a designated trail within the system. So that's why we're looking to fold that into a future project so we can actually contour to make it more sustainable for the future. You know, we've, uh, you know, in Western Nevada County, we, we fixed a bridge. We got the first solar park in the system. We saved the park system by keeping them not closing down. This is our new focus, this bridge. I mean, this, this trail, right? So it's gonna be the new thing that we partner up on. We've learned some great stuff. That's why all you folks are here today is so we can kind of learn from this, make it better. That's what we do. So it's such a nice overlook. Well, yeah, my name is Alden Olmsted, and uh, my dad, John Olmsted, built this Independence Trail. Obviously, he didn't build it back in the 1800s. It was the Excelsior Gold Mining Flume. Um, but dad, one of his favorite words was repurpose. So he repurposed this trail to become the, uh, the first, I believe it's the first ADA wheelchair accessible, ADA approved trail in the United States when, um, when he finished it. So he found it, he put down, you know, a hundred bucks, went into escrow, called friends, got uh, support. And then when he found it in complete disrepair and, you know, not blackened like this, but complete disrepair, he spent the next, I want to say six to eight years of his life, cleaning it up, restoring it, and making it into a beautiful um, 
beautiful wheelchair trail that people in the area and beyond have enjoyed for, for years. And what are your thoughts on rebuilding? Are you fairly optimistic that that's, that's going to be something that we can make happen? Yeah, I mean, Dad, as many people know, was a one-man crew for too much of his life. And he was able to get community groups when he built the trail, but then maintaining was always a challenge. So there was always scotch broom to be pulled, and there was always, um, you know, wooden parts to be recovered. I know I went down there a few years ago and still found some flattened coffee cans that he had hammered to patch parts of the zigzag that went down to the, to the creek. So, you know, to have this community effort, not in six months, but right now, like just days after the fire, is pretty incredible. So I'm actually really encouraged more than I thought uh, coming up here and seeing that everyone, state parks, FEMA, Bear Yuba Land Trust, Sequoia Challenge, um, CAL FIRE, I think everyone feels like rallying. And, um, and yeah, let's, let's get it rebuilt as soon as possible so that next spring we can, we can be you know, looking at what plants are regrowing. And um, I don't assume it'll be rebuilt by then, but I'm assuming we'll be well on our way. So yeah, I'm, I'm very encouraged. But I'm, I'm really appreciative of everyone that came out today, Matt, starting with Matt Green, Cal Fire, I mean, the work that they have done to, like I said, to see that everyone's on the same page at the very beginning is not, I haven't, I've never seen that before in the history of the Independence Trail, um, since, since it got built, probably, is the last time that I think we had this much community effort at the same time. So I think, I think uh, it's all positive looking forward for the Independence Trail. Is there anything else important that you think the community needs to know? I mean, it's, it's not a place to visit right now. It's just not. So, you know, I have a rebellious streak. My dad had a rebellious streak. This is not the time to test. Cal Fire is working hard. They're still finishing up. They're still clearing it. So it's even just safe for them. State Parks is working. People are working to get FEMA funds. This is just not the place to distract the workers' efforts on rescuing you from sliding down a hillside or something. Um, there's plenty of gorgeous places in California within five minutes of here, an hour of here, two hours of here. This is not the place to be right now. So please respect, um, I would say, yeah, please respect the firefighters, the police, the law enforcement, and stay off the trail until you're told otherwise. Sure. My name is Erica Seward. I'm the co-executive director with Bear Yuba Land Trust. And for those that don't know, Bear Yuba Land Trust, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. We've been in this community for 30 years, and within that time, we've protected 15,000 acres of land in the Bear Yuba River watersheds and have built and maintained 45 plus miles of trails that also include six public preserves. So what is your connection with uh, the Independence Trail? Sure, so the Independence Trail, um, the land trust back in 2012, we were gifted land, the Sequoia uh, Challenge um, from John Olmsted and his foundation. And through that, we have been managing as a public preserve 207 acres. So that's seven parcels that's inter interspersed with California State Parks lands. and. Within that is the Independence Trail. There's an east section and a west section, and the west section, including the iconic ramp and flumes, is what we've been maintaining over the course of the past eight years. And uh, what can you tell us about um, what your reaction was to being out there and seeing the damage today? Right, because we were there today. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, like many people in the public, um, we were first sort of alerted through images that we were seeing um, through social media and then also through our partnership with state parks and we've been in close communication with them but until you actually get onto the land you really don't quite understand um, uh, the the extent of the damage and so we went out today touring with nc media as well as um, partners in our uh, collaborative efforts to rebuild so that's uh, including State Parks, um, the county, Cal Fire. We've had um, several different nonprofit and community stakeholders that are involved in the process as well, um, alongside the Barry Land Trust. And just getting out on um, the land today and really seeing it, it it's, 
we're there for a reason. It's to document um, the loss. And so working um, to get that all accounted for and um, go through the proper procedures with FEMA to recoup some of that funding to um, support the rebuilding efforts. But then as a person who um, has enjoyed the, the trail, like many of you, um, you kind of get flashbacks of memories of just walking it and, and all of the, the moments that you've enjoyed and the stories and the um, experiences that have been shared. So it was really heartfelt and touching. And um, yeah, it's sort of a balance between what needs to get done and then also just sort of mourning the loss of such a community treasure, which is, um, which is hard. So for people that are looking to help out, they want to get involved in at any level, whatever that looks like, what can they do? What's the best way to help right. at the moment? So um, with the land trust, we're still kind of formulating a plan with our partners. And in, in the short term, um, there is uh, a page that you can go to at BYLT.org uh, slash support um, slash donate, I think it is. Um, you might want to edit that out and go back, but it's BYLT.org. You can go and click on the donate button and then there is a button um, dedicated to Independence Trail. And we've already seen an outpouring of support. Um, folks are also raising their hand to say, when you're ready to uh, rebuild, put my name on the list. We also have uh, people donating supplies like timber and, and other materials that we're going to need or services um, like surveying the land and things of that nature. So, um, you know, raise your hand if you want to help out. It really is going to be a community-wide effort. And then on October 16th, we're going to be hosting our open spaces and wild places um, virtual uh, gala and conservation awards and it's going to be right here at um, NC Media and in, in the studio there and we'll have live entertainment and online auction and then there will be a fund to need and tribute to the Independence Trail so folks can tend tune in from 6 to 7 30 on, on that day and we'll have it on Facebook and YouTube and wherever else we're posting it live uh, for people to contribute and um, we'll likely have some special appearances and fun fun things to look forward to so in september a multi-agency and stakeholder committee will begin meeting to discuss and plan for the repair and restoration of the independence trail to modern standards this will include surveying planning and a phased reconstruction of the trail recognizing the historical and community importance of the independence trail there is a joint commitment to rebuild the trail if you'd like to help Bear Yuba Land Trust is currently accepting donations that can be directly designated towards repairs of the Independence Trail. Donations of any amount are now being accepted at bylt.org slash support slash donate. Despite the fact that our local fires are under control due to the fires across the rest of the state, our air quality in the county remains poor. According to the U.S. Air Quality Index, our current score is still in the unhealthy range. Again, they recommend that everybody choose less strenuous activities, like walking instead of running, so you don't breathe as hard, and also shorten the amount of time you are active outdoors. People with heart or lung disease, older adults, children, and teens should be especially cautious. We've seen an increase of 31 COVID-19 cases this week, bringing our total to 430 confirmed cases. 65 cases are currently active with one current hospitalization. 16,751 tests have been performed, an increase of 1,107 tests this week. And unfortunately, there have been two more deaths this week, bringing our total to five. Visit mynevadacounty.com slash coronavirus for the most up-to-date information available. We'll continue our election coverage this week with a look at the race for the Truckee Donner Public Utility District. For more, let's turn it over to Sonora Slater. Thanks, Cole. The Truckee Donner Public Utility District, or PUD, provides water and electricity to the greater Truckee area, while focusing on guiding the community to conserve resources. They have programs designed to help customers save energy and water and reduce their carbon footprint. They are governed by a five-person, locally elected board of directors, with three full-term seats being up for election this November and five candidates running. Jeff Bender, Joseph Aguera, and Bob Ellis are all incumbents. Jeff Bender has held the position for multiple terms and lives with his family in Truckee. He owns Bender Engineering Commission and Jeff Bender Construction, 
which provides engineering and construction services along the Sierra Nevada. He is a licensed professional mechanical engineer and a licensed Class B general contractor in California. He has served on the Truckee Green Building Committee, the Truckee Planning Commission, and the Nevada County Local Agency Formation Commission. He also has experience in energy management, commissioning and retro commissioning, green building and renewable energy technologies. Joseph Aguera has also served multiple terms. He is a 40-year resident of Truckee, former owner of the Truckee Tahoe Mortuary, and was originally appointed to the PUD board in 1986. In addition to his experience on the PUD board, he has also served on the cemetery board, the fire district, and as the Lions Club president. Bob Ellis was elected in 2016, with his term expiring this year. He has a marketing degree from San Jose and an MBA at Pepperdine University. He worked in the truck industry for 20 years, has been in the real estate market as a mortgage broker for the last 10 years, and has leadership experience from holding the position of president of the Far West Ski Racing Association. The other two candidates are Kathy Stewart and Kim Harris. Kathy Stewart has lived in Truckee for more than 20 years, first residing in North Star before recently moving to Truckee proper. She was president of the North Star Community Service District Board, which focuses on trails, fire departments, sewage, and electricity for three years. She wants to bring her experience with water and electricity to the Truckee Donner PUD and focus on achieving 100% renewable Truckee. She is personally invested in renewable energy with her house being the first house in North Star to have installed solar power. Kim Harris moved to Truckee in 1993 and has worked locally for many years. She was a human resources manager for the Truckee Donner PUD for six years, having left the position a little over a year ago. Because of this, she believes that she better understands from the staff side of things the process the PUD goes through when making decisions as well as the complexities of policies and procedures. She wants to focus on connecting with the community, customer service, and transparency. Back to you, Cole. Thanks, Sonora. Independent Bookstore Day, taking place this year on Saturday, August 29th, is a yearly celebration with participation from hundreds of bookstores nationwide. According to Angie Kelsey, the manager of the bookseller in downtown Grass Valley, our very own local store has been a part of this tradition for several years now and plans to make the day great for readers everywhere despite COVID-19 complications. While some in-person events and giveaways will still occur, there will also be virtual events and surprises to include any community members who do not feel comfortable in store. The event is organized by the Independent Bookstore Day Committee, who reaches out to authors and booksellers each year and has arranged Zoom discussions and panels featuring middle school and young adult authors beginning at noon on Saturday. In addition, any online purchase through the bookseller's website that is over $25 will come with a free coloring book, an order over $50 will come with a free mystery prize, and an order over $100 will come with a free tote bag. You can also follow the bookseller on Instagram at BooksellerGV for an independent Bookstore Day trivia contest with the prize of a store gift certificate. Meanwhile, you can come by the shop from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. for hourly prize drawings, free advanced reading copies, and access to exclusive independent Bookstore Day merchandise, including scented candles, reading-themed clothing, and more. The merchandise will be first come, first serve. Customers can also buy a wrapped book without knowing its title to go on a surprise blind date with a book if they want to try to stop judging a book by its cover. The bookseller is willing to ship books and for those who are local and have special circumstances that prevent them from being able to safely pick up their books in person during this pandemic, they may make a special request to have their books delivered to their door. Visit the bookseller online at thebookseller.biz to get involved in the fun. We'll leave you tonight with our own little celebration of books. Remember, stay safe, take care of each other. We'll see you next week.